2020 has certainly been a strange year. Due to COVID-19, the garden's not been able to open. Ordinarily, we'd have up to 1,500 visitors and more visiting the garden through the National Garden Scheme and other charities. This year, though, a little bit different. We've still had a lot to do in the garden. The garden has still looked really nice, even though there's only three of us have been able to enjoy it. But nonetheless, at this time of year, the same amount of work's involved in putting the garden to bed for the winter. And this film goes through some of the activities that are involved in shutting the garden down, ready to open again, hopefully, in 2021. got lots of oleanders in the garden and while they're supposed to survive the British winters I do like to keep them protected so I've got an alley at the side of the house and you can see all my oleanders here six of them waiting to go into the covered alley and be protected from the winter here and this, particularly the winds that we get on the coast. Quite a large number of hydrangeas in containers as well probably about eight or ten different ones and again I brought them all down here to the back of the house and just put them all carefully in the corner to try and protect them from the strong winds that will inevitably come throughout the winter months. This patio behind the house here that's north facing is usually awash with containers and colour throughout the summer. Now we've had to take it all away, discarded the annuals, taken all the things out and some of the larger containers here we've now got bulbs in for the spring so hopefully there should be lots of hyacinths, tulips and daffodils coming out to brighten the area up in the spring. This is the area around the pond which is normally one of the highlights of the garden, full of colour in containers. You can just see three large containers there behind me. Two of the ones that have got compost on you can see have got bulbs in ready for the spring and the one with the fleeced cover over is a large gunner that I like to protect for the winter. This area around the main steps is another area that looks colourful through the summer and you can again see the containers there. I've got some osteospermums that are still looking good and I'm going to leave there through the winter. Sometimes they manage to survive through until next spring. But underplanted with them there's lots of bulbs again ready to come up in the spring. Behind me you can see a polytunnel that I set up this time of the year. I've got about 50 different agarves in containers that I have in the beach garden at the front of the house. And whilst they survive the cold, they really don't like the wet. So some of the smaller ones are in here under cover, with lots of air circulating around them to preserve them through the winter months and keep them dry. This is an alley at the side of the house that I've had a roof, Perspex roof fitted on top and you can see I've got some of the larger agarve specimens out of my beach garden stored here under the winter again to keep them dry. I've got a lovely summer house here that I bought in memory of my father but during the winter months it stores all the decorations and sculpture from the garden that I really don't want to leave out through the winter and it's really quite crammed packed with things, fun things and silly things as well as some of the more practical things, some of the furniture's in there as well. See then inside the summer house all these decorations, you can see an old fireplace at the back there, vintage horse, Terracotta ducks and snow and um, scarecrows, furniture stacked up to the gunnels, all put away carefully for next year. It's like a jigsaw puzzle having to put it all together in here. Here we are inside my small greenhouse. It's a heated greenhouse. I'm very lucky that I've got the space to be able to accommodate one. It's quite small, but it's used, as you can see, to cram full of all the succulents and delicate plants that come out of the garden. Uh, you can see there over my shoulder a ponytail palm, which is one of the largest plants in here. Lots of large succulents as well. Some of the fuchsias that are delicate I store in here for the winter months as well. And I've got some bonsai trees you can see there, which again should survive the winters outside, but it's so windy here on the coast. I do keep those in here for the winter months as well and lots of other plants that you'll see behind me as well um, succulents aeoniums cacti really quite a mixture of plants that really benefit from being here protected throughout the winter months this year i've bought over 400 bulbs which have planted you can see some containers here already planted up for next year and there's others around the garden as well here you can see the raised bed that I normally have lots of succulents in. They've all been ta carefully taken out. They're all in containers and lifted out and buried back in again next spring. And they're all now safely tucked away in the greenhouse. I've got quite a lot of palms in the garden and the one behind me you can see is a Bootia capita which is now nearly 15 to 20 foot tall. 
Usually through the winter I fleece these palms, not because they can't withstand the cold, but primarily because they don't like the wind. We get really strong winds through the winter here along the coast, but I'm afraid these now are too big to uh, fleece and I just can't get the covers over. So last year was the first year that they were uncovered and I'm afraid by the spring they were quite badly damaged and I had to remove quite a lot of the outer fronds. Uh, but they've done quite well and they've started to grow up again and they're looking good. So. Hopefully we won't get too much wind this winter. One of the garden is very much like a cottage garden during the summer. Although there's no lawn, you can see the shingle on the ground behind me. It's an area that's bounded by these two hedges here, uh, which have just been cut and trimmed for the winter and it's making the area look quite smart, but it is all rather bare. But it will look good again next spring. So there's a quick summary of how things are put to bed here at Driftwood in readiness for the winter. Hopefully next year we're going to open three times for the National Garden Scheme in June, July and August and by private arrangement visits too. Hopefully some of you might get the opportunity to come and see the garden and see all the things I've been stacking away for the winter come back out again and come into full bloom during the summer creating quite a magical garden through the summer months.